Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Silicon Hello. Beaches. That's virtual pitch night for 2023. It's so lovely. Yay, I can see arms going places. It's all wonderful. I hope that you all had an incredible Christmas break and holiday period and, and ready to get started for what I'm feeling like is going to be an incredible year this year. So it's really lovely to have you all with us. Um, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Let us know where your name and where you're coming in from and tuning in from. Also, if you are pitching tonight, you've registered to pitch, please let the Silicon Beach admin message them direct to let them know that you're in the room and we can make sure that you get the opportunity um, to definitely pitch tonight so we don't want to miss anyone out. So please do that. So the Silicon Beach admin team. All right, let's get this started. I haven't even introduced myself. My name is Karen Finch and I'm going to be your MC tonight. So just a little bit about me. I am the CEO and founder of Legally Yours, which is Australia's leading legal marketplace that connects individuals and startup founders and small businesses with fixed fee lawyers across Australia. So think legal services and no bill shock, which is a pretty good thing. I'm also the president of the Australian Legal Technology Association and the former chair of the Women of Australian Legal Tech. And I also have organized many, many free legal masterclasses and sessions for the Silicon Beach Network and also um, a sister network, the Lift Women as well. So that's what I love doing. Before we get into proceedings tonight, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I'm standing on here today, which is the Boon Boon Rawong and the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung peoples of the Eastern Kulin Nation. And I would like to acknowledge that sovereignty of this land was never ceded. It always was and always will be Aboriginal land. And I pay respect to their elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people of today. So let's get on to tonight. So the primary mission of Silicon Beach, if you did not know, is to empower founders. And as such, our vision is to create an environment where founders can feel supported, educated and empowered to fulfill their startup vision and values. And so tonight is all about providing a platform for founders and startup owners to feel supported, comfortable, open and connected. And everyone in this room has a part to play in all of this. So a little bit about our housekeeping tonight. Um, we are obviously recording and hello to anyone that's tuning in on Facebook. Please make sure if you're not pitching or not speaking, make sure that you're on mute so that we don't have any of those extra noises. Um, again, we encourage you to use the chat and also you, I encourage you to put in feedback and, and your thoughts um, on the chat after people have pitched. I'll always suggest that the pitcher look at the chat. Um, so even though only the judges are going to give their feedback tonight. We love um, being able to read the comments and connections and all those sorts of things going on. So everyone has a, a part to play with that. And finally, I'm going to take a little smile. Uh, sorry, a little smile. I'm going to take a little picture. So if anyone wants to put their camera on and be seen, I'm going to take a picture in three, two, one, and feel free to do a funny face. I'll give everyone a little moment. One, two, three, say cheese. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. You're all very obedient. I love it. All right. That is enough for me. I'm going to put you over to David Hauser, who is the leader of Silicon Beach Group and one of our judges tonight. David, over to you for some announcements. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Karen, for the great introduction. It's been such a long time since we had you here. I'm seeing it and we're so happy to have you back. And welcome, everyone, into the new year, uh, 2023, with uh, Silicon Beach. Um, if you're new to Silicon Beach or uh, one of our regulars, um, we're very excited to empower startups and founders, especially the ones that are aligned with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And nothing of that would be possible without the support of our sponsors. And today we would like to welcome a special welcome to our uh, event sponsor, which is Underdog Agency, a full-service design agency. Underdog works with founders to use research and validate their idea and design a product there and design a product their target audience will love. And we have Ross from uh, uh, Underdog on the judging panel today as well. So please uh, give applause to Underdog and um, yeah, welcome on board, Underdog. Thanks, David. Sponsors are important, community uh, partners as well, and uh, some of them are here tonight as well. Uh, we have Karen, obviously, uh, a household with Silicon Beach. We're very grateful to have her and Legally Yours uh, with us. 
And if you haven't checked out our website for a while, I want to mention uh, Yanto from Carrot Cake Studio. He was doing our website and uh, making it nice and pretty and functional for us. Thank you so much for that. Talking about uh, our website, you might have seen it before. Um, we do have special offers on our website. And today I want to introduce you to one community partner, one affiliate partner who does have a very important service for you. So I would like to ask you first, if you could raise your hand or give me a, a fancy emoji if you have a website. Fabulous, we have about 117 raised hands. Um, now, only put your hand down, only put your hand down if your website is already accessible, optimized, optimized for accessibility. That's 125 hands now up. Now, we have a solution for everyone who needs better accessibility to be nice to everyone out there um, visiting their website. And it's not just about being nice, it's also Silicon Beach admin is sharing computer sound, so I can't share my screen. So I will share, I will share um, with you a link to a linking and integrating um, service, which with just a little bit of a code that you can put into your website, you can uh, basically make your website accessible for everyone visiting it. It's just, it's a job for 30 minutes and we will share that link with you. And it's an amazing feature. I would love to show it today, but I can't, unfortunately. Um, with that said, we will do a recording for that. Um, I used up enough time, I believe. And no, not quite. We have a, another new feature. We have a we have an audience prize today, which is new um, for us, which is a prize for one of the winners that is given to the to the winner that you choose. The audience of the of the event is choosing. And what is the prize? The prize is a shout out for all our social media channels, our uh, newsletter, and uh, reaching 30,000 people following Silicon Beach, but also the rest of the world. We value this prize for $300, and one of the winners is getting that prize for free, and it's your choice uh, to... I think David froze. I think he did too. I think he did that on purpose so that I there was the too. build the build up. But Brian, did you want to um oh no, David, you're back. You froze. I did, but I'm back. Uh you're back. Yeah. go. Brian, <laughs> do you quickly want to explain how it's done and when yeah. it's done? Yeah, look, two things on that. First, uh anybody who got a link from me is showing up as me. So unless you were actually me, if you could change your name in Zoom to be who you actually are, um, that would be helpful. So to do that, just click on your picture. There's a three dot kind of box that's in the top right hand corner and you can rename yourself there. Um, this is mostly important because if you're logged in as me, you're probably one of the registered pictures. So what I'm going to do at the end of all of the registered pitches, I will send a link in chat to everyone that has a form and you pick out of the form the best pitch that you want to vote for. And then while the judges are deliberating, I will tally those votes and whoever has the most votes wins. So if you're showing up as me uh, and you're not me, um, it might be helpful to change your name so they so people who want to vote for you uh, can remember what your name is. I love it. Thank you so much, Brian. I love it. And um, please make sure if you are, again, just a reminder, contact Silicon Beach admin. Um, I will be announcing the first picture in a moment. So um, please get to, please let them know that you're in the room and yes, please do change your name. All right, let's get on to introducing our incredible judges who've been sitting here very, very patiently. So first up, we have Ross Mudd from Underdog, who you've already said, <laughs> said hello. Um, Ross has over 12 years worth of experience designing solutions for some of the biggest brands in the world. He found his passion for design at university, but when he moved from London to Melbourne, he found his purpose, helping founders create and scale their digital products. 
Ross has now spent over half of his career working in the startup scene in Melbourne, most notably at Appstar, where he was the creative director and managed an award-winning design team of 32 designers across three continents. Ross co-founded Underdog, which is a design agent agency that relentlessly focused on research and validation. They specialise in identifying customer pain points and designing solutions that solve real problems for the market his clients are targeting. So we are so lucky to have you here, Ross, and as our sponsor for tonight, please unmute, say hello again, and let us know the details of your incredible prize. Oh, thanks, Karen. Thanks, and thanks for having me. Uh, good to meet everyone. Um, so yeah, our prize we're offering today is a free consultation and a free ideation session. So we'll kind of get together, kind of really kind of get into the the details of your uh, your product, uh, and then come up with a load of different solutions um, to kind of solve the problem that you're trying to solve. So, um, yeah, there's probably about two or three hours, uh, of, no, sorry, three or four hours worth of workshops there. Um, yeah, that will kind of really kind of help you kind of narrow down and kind of yeah allow you to kind of test um, the solutions that we come up with with your target market. So, yeah, really excited to see the pictures, and yeah, good luck, everyone. Oh, thanks so much, Ross. Thank you. And our second judge for tonight, Nalusha from RMIT. Nalusha, give a lovely wave. <laughs> um, Dr. Nalusha Gallage is a sessional lecturer attached with the College of Business and Law at RMIT University. Before pursuing her doctoral studies, she was a senior lecturer and she has almost 15 years of teaching experience in higher education, both in Australia and overseas. Nalusha has taught students across the cascading higher education levels from foundation to master's, taking various business disciplines, including entrepreneurship entrepreneurship. Last year, Nalusha received the Learning and Teaching Rising Star Award and High Commendation for the Learning and Teaching Impact Award from RMIT. She was also awarded for her outstanding contribution to the community by RMIT Online. Outside of her academic career, Nalusha was a co-founder of a successful fashion clothing venture in her home country, and she mentors students and alumni in career development and new venture creations. She aims to offer young entre entrepreneurs the support to develop their entrepreneurial capabilities that could lead to a more successful startup activities and a new venture. Nalusha, we are so excited to have you here. Please unmute, say hello, and share the details of your incredible prize for tonight. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here and look forward to listening to all of your amazing pitches. And uh, from my end, uh, as a contribution to the community, as well as a part of the whole uh, pitching sessions, I'm offering a winner four uh, hours of uh, mentoring. So it can be four different sessions if you like. And of course, this will be related to whichever the areas that you see is important. So I look forward to your pitches tonight. Oh, thank you, Nalusha. We're so excited to have you here. And last but not least, we have David Hauser, who you've already heard from, from Think Innovation and is also our leader of Silicon Beach. Um, David joined the Silicon Beach after a successful 10-year career in the machine and tool, machine tool industry, where he led interdisciplinary teams to solve complex manufacturing problems for customers like Mercedes, Bosch, Airbus, Samsung, and many more. David obviously is the founder of Think Innovation, an agency for design thinking, human-centered design, and innovation strategies and Think Innovation consults and coaches customers from startups, SMEs to universities like Monash University and RMIT on creating innovative customer experiences. David's latest endeavour is the launch of the brand new Silicon Beach Studio, so which provides Silicon Beach startups with advice and hands-on services from ideation all the way to fundraising for their sustainable development ventures. So David, let us know about the prize you've got for tonight. Yes, no, um, Scott and, uh, uh, sorry, Ross and Nilusha put the bar up. I think I offered 90 minutes of uh, coaching and uh, pitch deck reviews and stuff like that that whatever you need in your startup journey I now have to bump that up to another four hours for one of the winners so uh, yeah the competition is already <laughs> already on looking forward to amazing pitches Oh, I absolutely love that. Well, thank you so much, David. And there you go, just up to the ante, which is fantastic. All right. So let's get on to the reason why we are all here tonight. So for those of you who may, this might be your first virtual pitch night with Silicon Beach. Each picture has only 90 seconds, nine zero, 90 seconds to pitch. Um, after that 90 seconds, you will hear a bell. Let's see. Can we hear the bell? <laughs> 
That's the bell sound. Thank you so much, Janine. <laughs> um, that is your indicator. Oh, that was David. That you go. That's your indication that um, you need to wrap it up. So we want to get back quickly. And then we I will hand over to the judges um, to basically provide some feedback and some extra questions. So if you have missed anything, I know our judges are really great at being able to add. Um, after that, um, we after we've hit, heard all the pictures tonight, we'll then move to some networking while the judges deliberate on who they're going to allocate their prizes to. Um, and as I mentioned, please. Please get that chat going. Please pass on your comments and feedbacks after every picture because um, we, yeah, that's that's what we're here for. It's all about community and support. All right, let's get into our first picture. Chris Marks, are you there from Collage Wrangler? Say hello. Hello. Everybody hear me okay? We certainly can, Chris. Can we see you? Are you putting your camera on? Uh, okay, I can do that too. There you are. Hello. Welcome, welcome. You are our first picture tonight, so you let me know when you're ready and we will start the clock. I'm ready. All right, off you go. Good luck. Good. Good evening, everybody. There's a growing problem in the business world today, and that growing problem is that there's a certain type of business that can't work with their data. These businesses are generally those businesses who are using online transaction services like Shopify or MYOB. And those transaction systems return data, but it's in different formats from each other. It's in different locations from each other. And the market that we're looking at, they're normally not technical people. So they can't do what they need to do to pull together the data in a way that's usable for them. What a lot of them try and do is they try and use Excel to do it, uh, which uh, is difficult to do. They usually end up in putting, looking at their data in the too hard to do basket. And because of this, globally, businesses are losing billions of dollars a year doing rework, missing opportunities, and not being able to run their businesses correctly. Our product, uh, Collage Wrangler, resolves this issue. What it does is it presents business owners with the ability to aggregate their data from an unlimited number of sources, use that, uh, use this interface to put it into an understandable format to answer their questions uh, according to their requirements and their needs. Uh, and then take action on it. And they can do all of this with our point and click intuitive interface. It needs no code, it needs no VLOOKUPs or cut and paste or uh, the other tribulations of working with data. It's a usable product. It is in the field uh, being tested right now. And the reason why we're here tonight is because we want to get uh, help in going to our next step. And that help is going to the marketplace. Thank you very much. Yay. I think we're going to have some applause going. Have we got that tonight? Oh, everybody <laughs> must be on mute. <laughs> uh, I knew we'd get there in the end. Oh, you had a really long applause. Well done, Chris. Thank you so much for kicking off. It's always the hardest thing to go first. So we really appreciate you doing that for us. All right, over to our judges. Let's see who would like to um, go first with any comments or questions. Let's see. Ross, I might go with you first. Um, yeah, great. So we need to kind of hear kind of about kind of your need and kind of what you're, what you're, you know, what, what exactly you need help with with going to market. So um, develop this, uh, I'm a computer scientist, I'm a technical person. I have a co-founder who's a business person, but uh, between the two of us, what we could really use is somebody that can really, so we believe we've established our beachhead. We believe we know what the, um, what, our, what our client looks like, but how to actually reach out to them uh, and get this in their shop and them using it is, is what we what we need help with. Is, is that clear enough? Yeah, that's very clear enough. That's cool. So, have you? As, so, do you have a real like a live product? Kind of how is it like? How far along the cycle are you? 
Uh, we're, we're way down in the cycle uh, in that we have a product. It's being used in the field by two different companies at this moment. Uh, those companies are, are people that we've met and that we know. And, um, and that's what we need to expand on. How do we take this product and get people to understand that there's a very easy way to do what they're doing that we've invented and they need to look at it. That's, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure if anyone else has any questions. I don't want to take up all the time. No, all good. Nalisha or David? David, off you go. Um, hello, Chris. Thanks for that pitch. Um, the problem that you solving that you're addressing I'm, I'm i'm very familiar with that problem it annoys me dramatically um but isn't isn't it supposed that apis are solving a lot of those uh problems already for us so uh, with apis i think uh, what you're going to be is for programmers or people like that they can you know download a library and use the apis to do something like this this is completely no code. There's not even a possibility to put code into it because there's no code needed. So anything that you can do from an SQL query to, to pull out your data, you can do with this. And there's no other product um, like that out there. Okay, cool. Um... I can actually give you a demonstration in about 45 seconds if you want to give me the screen. Yeah, you already you already ran too long with your pitch, so no. <laughs> <laughs> but one, one question before I hand. Nilusha, are you having something urgent? Go for it. No? Okay. Then you mentioned you have two customers and you have an idea who it is. Have you defined your perfect customer, your persona uh, already? Our persona is anybody uh, that is trying to run a business using data that comes from multiple sources. So they're going to be maybe your CRM and maybe your, um, your sales, uh, maybe your inventory. In order to understand your business, you have to pull all of this data into a single spot to get an overview because it's all a unified thing. And then you need to be able to query it in order to answer questions that you have. For example, um, where, where is my business selling best in what city and what are the um, uh, demographics of that city? Very easy to do with our tool. Got it. I also got that uh, you have to put more effort. It's a, it's a, you have a broad audience with that, and you would have to put more effort in defining your persona more, more detailed to actually target your marketing specifically to that, to that one, one single person, and yeah. it, give that person a name. <laughs> and that's what we're looking for assistance, and that's why we're here, here tonight. Thank you. Cool. I'm done. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much, David. Um, and thank you, Chris, as well. You can sit back and relax now. Thank you so much. Um, and as I mentioned before, please reach out to Chris on the chat. Um, put details in, ask questions. Um, we need your support um, and feedback on there too. This is what it's all about in the audience as well. All right, over to our next picture. We have Sharif from Becco Mays. Please unmute and say hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sharif, how are you? All I'm right. Thanks, how are you? Me I'm... and Raf can deal here in the audience, my business partner. We're oh. both saying hi, everyone. Oh, hi. I love it. All right, awesome. So are you ready to get started? All right, off you go. Good luck. Hi, everyone. So it's Sharif and me and Raf can deal here. We're pitching something really awesome. Your phones, guys, and ladies and gentlemen, your phones, whether they're Android or Apple, they are missing out on a really nice game app, a real time killer as well. We're pitching a game called Pick a Maze, which we believe is the ultimate number puzzle. This game, we've launched it on both Google Play and on Apple Store. It is teacher approved on Google Play, which means that it's suitable for all ages. So far, we've had 1,000 players playing the game on Google Play. 
in just one month, 4.9 star rating on Google Play, five star rating on Apple Store. The game seems to be liked by the community and it's expanding real fast. And I really invite all of you to just go Google Play or Apple Store, look up Big Amaze, the spelling is here in my name, have a look at the game, download it, have a look at it. It is so simple to learn, so simple to play. The moves are just up, down, left, and right. You move as many squares on the board that you see behind me here as the number that you'll end on. And the objective is to wipe out all the numbers on the board. So it's like the car has to reach from work to home on this board, eating up all the numbers on its way. This is, as, I, as, I, as I said, the concept is very simple. You can learn it so quickly. So we look forward to people to trying it out and give us feedback. Oh, And beautifully timed too. Well done. Right on that 90 second mark. And I loved it. I could see everybody all of a sudden was like Googling and on their quick, we better look at it. So absolutely love it. All right, judges, over to you for some comments, feedback, questions. Who would like to go first? And Alicia, actually, I'm going to give you the opportunity to go first. Off you go. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, Sheriff, amazing stuff with the game app. And uh, I'm just keen to know what exactly is the benefit they're offering because of course you know today there are so many different types of games even used in education i would say so what is it that you're you're really offering to your uh, customers there's a direct benefit related to numeracy skills and strategy skills because the, in the game you have to do counting and you have to plan your path so that's okay. as far as the benefit to the audience is okay and how how is that different to games that's that's already available actually solving a puzzle in big maze is much simpler than solving i mean uh, algorithmically speaking if you let me just talk technology uh, technically a little bit algorithmically speaking it is actually simpler to solve some of those puzzles then because in, in for example sudoku so sudoku is let's say our counterpart in sudoku you have to fill the entire board with numbers here the board is partially filled with numbers and your objective is to remove those numbers and you have to count along the way and you have to plan your path. So it's not just mathematical skills like in Sudoku, it is also strategy. You're moving, so it's pretty much like an arcade as much as it is a number puzzle. Fantastic, and what is it that you're looking for and what kind of support or what is it that you need? We need more uh, uh, you know, insight in marketing in particular. We're getting more uh, organic audience as we speak from all over the world because you know it's a game so everybody can know it, which is really cool and we're seeing the interaction we're monitoring the behavior people progressing on the game so we can see that as soon as you start the game you're progressing which is really cool but what we would like to see more of is more people downloading the game so we are really up for some marketing consulting all right fantastic thank you so much and wish you good luck Thank you. Thanks, Nalisha. Great questions. All right, David and Ross, any feedback, questions? Ross, um, off you go. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, I'm, I'm just wondering, just, just, I'm just interested. It looks like a great, yeah, really great game. But just wondering how many levels are there? Is it kind of, yeah, like, is it kind of continuous? Or is a thousand. Something? A thousand. And there are levels that are really tough. So oh, yeah. this board, that's three by three. Yeah. And then later there's four by four and up to seven by seven. And we've got some uh, class of uh, boards called Bico Master uh, uh, boards that are filled with numbers. And you have to re be really careful when you're planning your path. Okay, well, that's really clever. Yeah, I really like it. It's kind of a really cool, simple idea. Um, another question, I just, um, just how do you plan or do, are you monetizing it yet or how are you planning to monetize it? So we're monetizing it the nice way rather than grounding you and the game in ads every, every breath. People, almost every breath you take you see an ad in our case here we're doing it wisely we know that at some point when you like the game you're going to start needing hints and our algorithms have generated hints for every single step in every board or in all of the thousand boards a lot of computer science went into that so whenever you need a hint you need to have a coin budget whenever you need coins you start off with 200 coins you run out of the coins you start asking for hints watch ad this is what's called rewarded ads, which is the most um, nice, you know, 
way of monetizing uh, ads rather than interstitial or banner which is, looks really ugly we don't like those we would give you an ad if you actually need one to progress in the game yeah well that's cool yeah i really like it um yeah great pitch um yeah great concept um i'll pass over to david thank you david final comment okay i see that we have 11 more pictures to go so uh, probably we, we speed up a little bit Sharif, I know you for a while. Do you? Is there other intention behind it? Do you do a machine learning algorithm behind for your research? So this particular game, it's completely new. And uh, also it's a completely new problem in machine learning research. So me and my partner, Raif Kandil, have been uh, thinking up some uh, reinforcement learning approaches in order to solve the boards. Because sometimes when the boards get really filled up with numbers, using an, a crude algorithm, you know, brute force method to solve it becomes really difficult. So we're trying to find some blend between some AI plus human expertise in order to solve some of those words. So that, well, what I really like, because I'm a, I'm a scientist myself, I passed by UTS RMIT, by the way, and I'm now in Deakin University uh, doing uh, machine learning slash material science. So I love reinforcement learning and whenever there are games and AI with the games. That's something I really like to do. And this game is a new problem in this field. And we might actually shoot um, a paper at some point. All right. And that includes our judging. Well done, Sharif. That was fantastic. Thank you, judges. Well done again. Yay. All right. We are going to have to start speeding things up here today because we have got an absolute full um, bill with pictures tonight. So judges, I've got a little game for you. Um, next time, we're going to just, I'm going to pick the first one to unmute. All right. So you better be on um, to provide feedback. So we're going to rush it through. I can see Nalisha, she's up for the challenge. All right, over to our next picture. We have Chris Nakayama from NUFA. Chris. Hi, Hello. Everyone. Hi, how are you? All right, are you ready to get started? I am. Okay, your time starts now. Good luck. Cool. So NUFA is an app that allows users to see themselves in different forms of fitness levels, uh, as well as generate customized AI workouts with the eventual goal of pivoting into AI dressing rooms. So how it works right now is the user uploads a photo of themselves and is then prompted with an AI generated uh, photo of themselves at a, different, uh, at a different fitness level. In addition to this, they're also prompted with an AI workout to help them actually achieve this fitness level as well as a dietary plan uh, to maintain these goals and actually achieve them. This technology is building off of previous technology that we have built and eventually will progress to us tackling the problem of over 30% of online clothing purchases ending in returns. Currently, we have some pretty solid traction. We reached number one in on the App Store free charts in Thailand, as well as top 15 for Australia, or sorry, I don't know if that one's right, but uh, I think it's Australia, Canada, uh, Taiwan, and the Philippines. And also most recently, just yesterday, we reached over 21,000 downloads in China, and that was our first day of launching there. Um, so our, our vision is to essentially keep on progressing the product until we eventually find that strong, strong user base. Right now, we're just trying to develop the technology, but what we're really looking for is to provide a strong use case that is a maintainable and sustainable uh, and actually like doing uh, you know positive action use case. So that's really what we're looking for here tonight. Um, we have some cool technology, but we're still looking for what is the best actual application of this. Uh, and Thank you so much, Chris. All right, judges, who's going to go first? Quick, quick, unmute, unmute. And Alicia, you're on it. Let's go. <laughs> Hi, so great stuff. I mean, I would definitely like to check that app out. And uh, I was wondering what exactly is the commitment from customers? As in like, what is what are the, what are your revenue avenues there? Uh -huh. So currently we've generated over $80,000 in revenue right now. Just yesterday, we generated over $2,000 in revenue. Our current model is a subscription-based model uh, in addition to a like premium feature model. So currently uh, when a user is generating a photo of themselves, uh, this is blocked behind a paywall right now and it's like a dollar to unlock it. And they can also uh, subscribe for an annual plan, which allows them to have full photo generation as well as access to the workout routines. And that is the current model as of now. However, in the future, which is the eventual goal to progress the technology forward, um, to then do commission sales uh, with other e-commerce stores, as well as an installation fee for uh, you know setting our system up with us. 
Fantastic. Uh, I, I can't really help with tech, but then I'm sure somebody else here can. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Nalisha. And we'll probably just have 60 seconds from either David or Ross if you had a quick burning question or some feedback on the pitch. Go, Ross. Uh, I just want to say yeah, it's just a, a really cool concept and yeah, great that you're kind of out there in the market kind of and you've got some traction already. Um, so you said you kind of wanted some help with the tech side. What, what is it exactly that you kind of you need help with? So we have this cool technology, which you know, we're not exactly sure what we want to 100% do with it. As of now, we have technology that allows users to see themselves, let's say, at their starting fitness level and all the way to perhaps their ideal fitness level. And we also allow for progression of being able to see themselves at different stages with the workouts. So general landmarks for where they could expect to, you know, achieve this uh, fitness goal in a given amount of time if they were to stick with the workout plan and the diet that is provided for them. Um, however, we're not exactly sure if this is the best use case for the technology. It's super cool and it looks great, but at the same time, is that really the application that we want to, to push forward with this? Um, and eventually if we do get to the AI dressing room, uh, that would be awesome, but we're really just looking for how much depth can we go to and, uh, where, where is that really strong, strong, uh, you know, high retention use case, but that's what we're unsure of now. Yeah, cool. That's cool. Though. It's a good place to be in that. It's an exciting time to try and figure that out. Um, yeah, cool. Incredible. Thank you, Ross. Thanks, Malisha. Thank you, Chris. Amazing. So make sure you put all those contact details and you'll know in the chat also, please make notes of all the picture details. So the incredible Brian is putting all those in there. So well done. Sit back and relax, Chris. All right, over to our next picture. We have Jeffrey Amwari from Better Health Academy. Would you like to unmute and say hello, Jeffrey? Jeffrey. Are you there, Jeffrey? Good morning. <laughs> I'm good here. Hi, Hi we can hear you, Jeffrey. You, you had me in suspense there. It's so good to see you. All right. Are you ready to get pitching? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Jeffrey Magembe from Kenya. I'll be here pitching about Better Health, Better Health Academy. Uh, Better Health Academy is a concept that uh, was born back in 2021 in December after we realized there was a uh, uh, some significant gaps in our healthcare system. And uh, we realized uh, several nurses wanted to transition either from bed bedside nursing to entrepreneurship, and they lacked the necessary entrepreneurship uh, skills. And of course, also, we also noted that uh, innovation was uh, something that was lacking and, uh, and uh, they could not be able to be uh, uh, basically implement it or integrate it in practice. And of course, also we realized that uh, there were several people who are missing continuous education programs for certain healthcare cadres. So Better Health Academy came on board and we wanted to improve and promote and advocate for healthcare excellency. And uh, we focused on innovation, entrepreneurship uh, in regards to health, and uh, also empowering uh, the, the healthcare workers. And uh, our focus was on uh, the th uh, three SDGs, that is health and well-being, focusing on healthcare workers, and uh, of course, also the community, and focusing on the non-communicable diseases. And another thing which we wanted is to uh, focus on the fourth uh, SDG, that is quality education. Thank you very much. Incredible, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. All right, judges, we've got time for some comments, feedback, just for one of you who would like to go first or who would like to comment. David, off you go. Jeffrey, thank you for joining us all the way from uh, Kenya. Um, first, your your product, your service, the health, uh, Better Health Academy, is it you're ta just targeting the K Kenya market. You're going uh, other Africa places. You're going global with it at the moment. Uh, currently, we are focusing not really Kenyan, but uh, we are looking on a global perspective because our platform is virtual, and uh, we we understand that uh, health is a program globally, and uh, we know that we can through our effort we can be able to impact not only people in Kenya and Africa as well, but also people worldwide. Cool. What help do you need? Uh, currently, we need expertise and, uh, of course, uh, finances. 
because uh, we there's a lot of work, uh, for example, coming up with content. Uh, we also will need people who want either to market the platform, uh, finance, because my background is health and uh, my co-founder is also uh, in health and uh, probably we are not very vast in marketing and uh, financing. And uh, so that is why we want to, uh, to ask for such. Awesome. Thank you very much. I hand over to Ross no, Nilush. No, we, 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 on the, we haven't got time. We're running out of time. So I'm going to go on to the next picture. But Jeffrey, thank you so much. And if anyone out there in the audience has connections or can give that help, please connect with Jeffrey. Um, let's get the community involved. And um, yeah, incredible. And thank you again um, for joining us all the way from Kenya. Thanks so much, Jeffrey. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Our next picture, we have Bala Venu from Auli Stay. Please unmute and say hello. Uh, hi. Uh, good day. Uh, hi, my Bala. name is Bala. Uh, hi. How are you? Very well. Off you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, my startup is hourlystay.com, hourly based hotel booking platform. Uh, once I went to Bangalore for a short business trip, I had to pay for the whole day, even though I stayed only for four hours in the hotel. So that is how hotel system works. We want to disrupt that uh, current check-in, check-out uh, restriction. So uh, advantages of hourly stay booking is travelers can save a lot of time and money. Uh, if you need only a few hours of stay, you can book for a few hours through our platform and pay for the hours you have stayed. You don't have to pay uh, the full night uh, uh, hotel room rent if your requirement is only for short hours. Suppose you need extra few hours in your normal booking, there again, you book through uh, hourlystay.com, uh, you get uh, cheaper accommodation. So uh, if, then the question comes, what about the hotel industry? How do they make money out of it? They can make money from the early checkout or late check-in rooms uh, through our platform. So we want to disrupt the current industrial, sorry, current hospitality is standard. They are checking checkout restriction. At present, I would say they are not customer friendly, at least for the timing. We should change it. We are creating the supply of short stay hot hostel room, hotel rooms, sorry, throughout the world. At present, there is no common platform for it. Thank you. Bala, have you pitched before? I feel like you're a returning pitcher. Uh, I think I have a pitch to before in uh, here. I, I don't remember. I think I think I've had I've heard you pitch before. So thank you so much for coming back. And I wanted to draw attention to that because you can. We love hearing returning pitches come on Silicon Beach. So um, yeah, incredible. Thank you so much. All right, judges, who would like to ask a question? Ross, over to you. Um, yeah, it's a great concept. Um, I'm just wondering how are you going like with like um, engaging with hotels? Are they open and receptive to this kind of idea? Um, and yeah, just yeah, just keen to see how you're kind of penetrating the market in that sense. Okay, this journey we have started uh, in 2017. Uh, when I started this concept, I sent a few marketing guys in Indian South South, South Indian cities to understand how hotels are going to react on this. Luckily, the hotel uh, response was highly promising. Then we started in India and we grew all over the world with around 3000 hotels were connected before the COVID. And uh, I had uh, an investor partner from Dubai as well. So we had around 2,800 to 3000 hotel connected. Even in Australia, we had around 18 hotels. Uh, so we started booking in Bangalore. We had booking in Singapore and Taiwan, but unfortunately COVID uh, hit, everything was closed, uh, hospitality industry was completely shut, and the investor pulled out. I, I became uh, bankrupt in, in this case. Uh, I had no money to move forward. Uh, we removed all the staff, 50 staff were working in Tiruvannaburam, southern Indian city, and we removed the staff, and we went in, into uh, uh, hibernation. Now we are back again with the minimum viable product. Now the website is up, the Android app is up, your question regarding the hotel acceptance, they can make uh, more than 100% occupancy rate only through this platform. A room can be sold in to multiple people in slot basis, four hours, six hours slot. 
and they may they can make money more than what they are making right now and at present business travelers they uh, sometimes they stay in a hotel if they are if they are rich otherwise they uh, uh, spend the time between their travel and uh, uh, transit times they stay here and there they somehow manage with the public uh, uh, facilities to spend time but if the hotels allow them to stay for few hours they would definitely go for the hotel uh, comfortness and that is what we are trying to create there is no common platform at present for this short stay hotels i would say this is going to disrupt the industry and will be competition for booking.com that is my dream i love it we love a good disruptor well done thank you so much bala thank you and you can sit back and relax and we'll get on to our next picture but just a reminder before i do announce that we do have this community prize so i hope everyone in the audience is taking notes on it on each of the pictures um, because you will be called on to vote um, for your favorite pitch for this evening so make sure you're all on to that all right grant callahan i can see you there unmute say hello thanks karen <laughs> all right are you ready to get pitching i am all right off you go good luck best in class organizations struggle to achieve adoption rates of 20 percent with their data and analytics platforms they are incredibly inefficient. Data workers spend 44% of their time on unsuccessful activities. Hi, I'm Grant, CEO and co-founder of Dabbler.io. We know and understand these challenges because everyone in our company is data workers, and our job is to actively manage communities of knowledge workers. So to make our business run more effectively and really engage our customers, we began developing an analytics collaboration platform that addresses these challenges and lifts user engagement with data ultimately providing a higher ROI to our customers' investment in their data. Our vision for Dabbler is to be the Slack slash Jira for analytics communities, and our goal is to bring efficiencies to data teams with workflow and collaboration tools specific to analytics. Dabbler's for larger enterprises that are looking to capitalize on their initial investments in data. So think of companies with 50 or more users using tools like Tableau and Power BI. Currently, we've developed Dabbler as part of our superannuation analytics platform. So as a standalone product, we're achieving 130K of ARR each year, and that's across 300 users and five alpha customers. But perhaps our biggest achievement is the uplift in user engagement that we're getting. So we're achieving more than 70% MAUs versus the best in class, according to Gartner, of 20%. So thank you very much for your time. If you'd like to learn more, uh, you can contact us at dabbler.io or if you'd like to learn more about our seed funding round you can contact me at grant c at dabbler.io thank you very much grant brilliant pitch absolutely loved it all right judges who would like to weigh in with a question comment feedback Ta -da -da. all right david i'm going to go to you <laughs> Okay. Um, thank you, Grant, for for that. You you have customers. Um, how do you what do you have a, a go to market strategy? How you grow the business, or is that what you're looking for? Uh, yes, we do have a go to market strategy. Um, so it's been great having existing customers where we can get real traction me metrics and really prove the product out. Now we're spinning that out as its own entity and launching that using two different ways. So traditional product-led marketing, but also we've got a big back background in enterprise direct sales. So we'll be also approaching that. Definitely our ideal customer is going to be the larger enterprise size of, side of things. Um, and that's kind of our background in selling to them as well. So what are you going to, how much are you raising and what are you going to do with that money? We're going to grow uh, a bigger army. So we're looking for more than a million dollars in the next round. And when you say a, a, a bigger army, uh, how many people are you right now that are working on this? I understand you have multiple businesses probably. How many are in there and how many do you want? Yeah, that's right. It's interesting. So we've got an established cash flow positive business and we've really seen the value in this particular product that was working internally for us. And so we're spinning that out further. So across our team of about 14 people, 
in varying capacities that, you know, it's managed chaos where I'm just drawing people from different tasks saying, let's go develop this feature, let's test this while keeping the existing business going. So hopefully through the next round, we can really kind of separate things and have dedicated teams. And well, I, I doubt we'll alleviate more of the chaos, but um, that's, our, that's our goal. It, it, it becomes quiet after the storm, they say. <laughs> Never. Best, best luck with that. If you haven't su subscribed uh, yet to um, to Founder Suite, we have a, a community special there to help you with your fundraising. Oh, awesome. Thanks. I look forward to catching up. Cool. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Grant. You can sit back and relax. And thank you, David, for those great questions. All right. Over to our next speaker, Mina from WeWing. Mina, please say hello. Hi. Hi, Mina, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, everyone. All right. So excited to be here today. <laughs> Yay, we're excited to have you. All right, Mina, off you go. Your time starts now. Thank you so much. I'm here uh, with an idea to body date, uh, and it's we win. Uh, guys, how did you find out about this virtual pitch night today? And how did you notify entrepreneurs about this event? You know, how many people are out there looking for an opportunity like this to talk with someone who care about their idea? There are hundreds, millions and far over. There are 472 million entrepreneurs and over 8,000 business accelerators worldwide, about, 30, uh, about 305 million startups are created annually and almost 90% of them fail. There must be an exclusive solution to unite this diverse family under one roof. Let's forget about fundraising, equity, job seeking, and focus on how to help a young generation of entrepreneurs to follow their dreams wherever they are on the earth, hand in hand with accelerators in an interactive, fun, and informative platform. Let's talk about what to pack up, where to kick off, whom to count on, and how to keep up, because Dreams do not have nationalities and dreams can fly over the borders. If we fight, if we fight together, we win. Thank you so much. Mina, your energy was infectious then. I could see everyone was smiling <laughs> along with you. Well done. Just incredible. Thank you. All right, judges, who would like to provide some questions or feedback? Maybe Nalisha, would you like to go? Yes, you've already Yeah, answered. hi. So thank you for that <laughs> amazing pitch. I'm just keen to know, so what is it that you're exactly offering? Maybe, maybe I didn't catch it. Yeah, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, an exclusive platform. You know, uh, not just a LinkedIn post following accelerators page or uh, Facebook, you know, we are innovative. So we have to uh, build an exclusive solution for ourselves because there are several people out there, people out there looking for some uh, opportunity. There are uh, some countries who are developing strategies to attract entrepreneurs, but people and, you know, um, almost in, uh, in the developing countries do not know about these um, opportunities and facilities and they never follow their dreams because they do not know where to start. But if we can notify them, if we can share our journey with them, there are several um brilliant ideas you know i'm from iran and i've been looking for an opportunity to start and last year uh, i've been um with a team who fighting for uh canadian startup visa program so i know how entrepreneurs in um especially in developing countries fight for opportunities I can, I can definitely understand. <laughs> I understand where you're coming from. So what kind of platform is WeWin? Yeah, WeWin is just an idea. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So you, you don't really have a, 
fully no. fledged platform yet. No, not yet. Okay. I'm here. Yeah, I started okay. with the sentence that I'm here to validate an idea, <laughs> not with the product, not with the traction. Oh my God, I'm here in Melbourne for four months. So. <laughs> All right, yeah, thank you so much. Good. I Cheers. love it. Well, thank you. Thank you, Lucia. And thank you, Mina. So if you want to get in and, and so help much. Mina with this idea, make sure you get, connect. You've got all the details in there. Thank you so much. You can sit back and relax. And before thank I you, announce, <laughs> thank you, Mina. Thank um, you. Before I announce the next picture, just a little reminder, if you are in the room and you haven't alerted Silicon Beach admin that you are pitching tonight, please make sure that you send a private message there and we'll make sure that we get you on the list. All right, over to our next picture. We have Linda from IDClip. Linda, hello. How are you? Hi. Hi, Karen. Hi, everyone. So excited to be here. Oh, we're very excited to have you. All right. Are you ready to pitch? Yep. Okay. Your time starts now. Good luck. I'm the founder of Idea Clip, and my name is Linda. And Idea Clip is a social for your wildest fan insights. If Facebook is screaming me, 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 showing off what I did today, Idea Clip is all about you, 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 where fans can share their fan insights with their favorite local businesses, charities, and not for profits to help them innovate for their sustainable future. So, what problems are we solving? First, SMEs live or die by online review as we know. Second, SMEs depend on tech giants for their customer acquisition. Finally, SMEs digital spending has increased since COVID, but ROE, return on investment, is hardly measurable. So how does Idea Clip work? Businesses no longer need to chase random customers for feedback, begging for feedback, but your true fans come to you. First, you have an idea or a wish, an idea that could benefit both you and your favorite business. Download the app, sign up, and search for the business you want to collab with. Go to their business space and start clipping your wild ideas. Other fans can then upvote your idea with Love It and back up your idea using edits. This collaborative synergy helps businesses clearly see how many of their fans create the same idea. Once your idea gets implemented by the business, you will instantly become the author, earning you e-gifts such as a free coffee or a discount at your favorite store. Or you can also choose to donate your rewards to a charity of your choice. Idea Clip is a platform where everyone, everyone can create a positive social impact your way. So do good, get great, download the app now. Incredible, Linda. Well done. Congratulations on a, on a brilliant pitch. All right, judges, over to one of you for a quick comment. Ross, off you go. Oh, that was a great pitch. It was, yeah, really well precise and such a great, um, yeah, such a great platform. So kind of what do you need help with at this stage? Um, we've just launched the MVP. So go to, go to market strategy um, is foremost important. And also, um, uh, I'm actually looking for a tech co-founder as well, because I'm a solo founder. The journey has been quite tough for the last two years. Somebody who really believes in the vision, which is harnessing the power of people and positivity for the greater good, we can really make this happen, you know, to create that positive influence in our society. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's such a good idea. But I mean, congratulations for getting it this far already. That's phenomenal yeah, yeah. work. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Ross. And I have a sneaking suspicion, Linda, that there might be some potential tech co-founders in this audience tonight that might be reaching out to you. So absolutely love it. So thank you so much. Well done. Sit back and relax. All right. Over to our next picture. We have Joseph from, um, Joseph Yap from Zero Tag. Joseph, are you there? Joseph, I can't hear you, but I can see your screen. Yes, I'm here. All right, Joseph, off you go. You have 90 seconds starts now. Consumers nowadays have to be very conscious of what they buy. So planning and deciding what to buy can be very stressful. Zero Tag is a platform for conscious consumption powered by digital product labels for sustainable shopping. The platform is made up of three main elements, a tag, an e-label, and an app. The tag is a QR code sticker that consumers can stick onto any reusable container and when scanned shows product details of whatever's inside. The e-label can be changed when the container is refilled and when users have a profile with zero tag, e-labels will warn users if a product does not match their dietary preferences. 
The app is a food planner and a tracker for mindful eating. It feature, features an e-pantry, recipes, and a shopping list. Users can add recipes to a shopping list, which can check if they already have those items in their e-pantry, which is their collection of tabbed containers, then recommend where to buy the remaining items. In summary, Zero Tab provides clarity for the conscious consumer, custom storytelling, and digital advertising for brands and retailers, and the solution to packaging waste that is designed to scale. We are launching a pilot with partner retailers and Sustainability Victoria early this year. We are a technical and creative team with multidisciplinary skills and passionate in solving the problem of packaging waste. Sorry, yeah, what's that? Hold on, all right, let's. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, uh, sorry, there's a comment that bad luck. Okay, Nalisha, I can see that you're on mute. Would you like to? Um, <laughs> yeah, to great this? concept, Joseph. I was just wondering what help are you actually looking for today? What help? So first, um, so, so first we're trying to build a community, educating people that, you know what, um, bringing your own containers to, uh, to buy things, to refill things, you can actually do it in so many places. Go to a farmer's market, there are places um, like either like bulk food stores, whole grain, but you know, like farmer's markets, we've been buying stuff packaging free for centuries. You know, it's only recently where the single use packaging problem is such a big thing. Um, and also there are emerging companies that are um, trying to innovate uh, in, with re reusable packaging. So we want to be, um, we want to connect with everyone in that community and show people that actually, um, you know, with zero tag, you know, bring your own container can actually be more convenient and a more fun way of shopping. Amazing. I'm sure we'll, we'll talk after. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much, Joseph. You can sit back and relax and we're going to get on to our next picture because we are coming down to the last, um, last four pictures. So we have Damien. Would you like to un un unmute from TreeCoin? Damien, where are you? Good to be here. Hey, how are you? Welcome. All right. Are you ready to get starting started? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Your time starts now. Good luck. People are dreading climate change and our wealth is deeply threatened by its impacts. Now, imagine a way of unifying economic abundance and climate stability. Enter FreeCoin, a carbon drawdown and income creation system. We're creating a digital currency phenomenon to rebalance our atmosphere and create enormous new wealth by reforesting our planet. We reward forest growers worldwide with a massively scalable digital currency, creating a commerce platform where personal wealth equals climate health. I'm Damien, the CEO, and I'm joined by my CFO, Syl Hawkins, today on the call, and together we co-founded TreeCoin, and we'll answer the questions together today. We've got a fantastic core team. We have an expert advisory board and we're funded for the next 12 months. Our MVP app will be launched by March and through our global forest management software partners, we will enable forest growers to earn revenue, corporate emitters to easily offset and everyday users to own the planet's coolest currency in their digital wallets. Today, we're offering 2% equity for $60,000 investment to onboard even more team. We're looking for a kick-ass project manager to support our global pilot forest growers, and we're seeking renowned finance experts to join our economics advisory board. Now, money really does grow on trees. Thank you. Ah, brilliant tagline at the end there. Absolutely loved it. Congratulations on a great pitch. All right, judges, who would like to ask a question or provide some feedback? We will go with, I can see David. Are you trying to unmute David? <laughs> um, then, then I unmute. Um, <laughs> great pitch and, and, and thanks for coming back, uh, Damien. Um, Thank you. Uh, a, a great product now who is who is getting who is getting the the 
the wealth because if i want to plant a tree most most places i need to own land to plant a tree uh, i cannot go somewhere and plant a tree wherever i want to how is how is that working that people that do not are already owners of big chunks of land are actually really getting a wealth out of this model I'd like to do a quick part one, and then I'd like to handball to self if the IT can work um, to answer the quick second part of this uh, question. So um, users can um, just take the initiative and get involved by scanning forest areas on land that they don't own through agreements with landowners, um, and they can collaborate in the platform to split the revenue. So that we're building in a kind of uh, incentive to team up between um, growers uh, and landowners. Um, I don't know if Karen can spotlight itself, so if he wants to add anything to the answer. You can all hear me, hopefully, I'm unmuted. Yeah, yeah jumping on the end of David, so, um, within TreeCoin platform, we developed a way where landholders and people who wanted to do the work could collaborate and automatically have smart contracts on a blockchain system so that the revenue generated will just peer off in whatever their agreed percentage. If you want 80%, you're the landholder, I agree to plant the trees and manage them for 20%, for the rest of the time for the project, revenue splits like that could be up to a thousand different uh, stakeholders on one project. But you, you, you trust that uh, people are good people. You believe in the good in, in, in humanity. Uh, yes and no. It's in a way so that if there's legal systems and requirements for different jurisdictions, the TreeCoin platform can accommodate those and move uh, ownership tokens around. But we aim to incentivize relationship building in the real world, even though it's a digital platform. Cool. Um, I will be I will be in touch. I, I had some some thoughts about it, but we hand over to to the next pitch. Thank you so much for the pitch, and uh, all best luck with the fundraising. Thanks so much. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. And David, that's why you have good lawyers. See, good lawyers keep everyone honest. Come to Legally Yours. We've got the good lawyers. <laughs> I love it. Put a plug in for myself there. All right. Over to our next picture. We've got two more to go and then we'll be um, having some breakout rooms and some networking time so you can actually talk to the pitchers direct. So we've got Tristan from Tristan Barker. Please say hello. Unmute. Say hello. Let us know that you're there. Yeah. I can certainly hear you, Tristan. Great to see you. Are you ready to pitch? Yeah, let's jump into it. All right, good luck. Off you go. A behemoth here. Um, I'm a collaborator of the Australian Landscape Science Institute, run by Peter Andrews, who has one of five UN confirmed infinitely sustainable farming models. It's capable of regenerating thrash land in Australia or Tanzania in six months or less. In Australia, we have cattle stations with more than 1.4 million hectares and less than 20,000 heads of cattle on them. Uh, cows don't need that much grass. The problem is that there's no grass. So uh, Peter's method is excellent for this. It doesn't require fertilizer. It increases the profitability of existent beef farms by 230%. In every hectare of topsoil, you have 16,000 tons of soil. Peter's method can increase the carbon content of that soil by 3%. 1% is 16,000 carbon credits. Multiply that by $90, that's the current rate. So the market opportunity scaled up to 1 million hectares worth of land is more than $14 billion worth of carbon credit. So enough to disrupt the entire marketplace. Um, what can I do with that? Fortunately, I'm an investment banker. I work with 360 Green out of Singapore with Randeep Malhi, who left um, his job as an investment banker for BlackRock to move into the tokenization of carbon credits. How is that also relevant? I'm also a shareholder of the fastest moving DeFi platform being built out of Silicon Valley funded money in the States. Um, I grew our presence to over 100,000 100, unique users in less than a year. So um, solving problems of liquidity, carbon, and yeah, this is literally enough to save the planet in the next 20 years. Amazing, Tristan. Wow. Okay, judges, who wants to tackle this one? Let's see. David and Alicia, Ross, three, two, one. Or I'm picking one of you. Alicia, I'm going to you. Off you go. Got any comments or feedback? Yeah, great pitch, Tristan. I'm just wondering what kind of support you're looking for. So right now, um, there's a bunch of existent farms that have switched over to the natural sequence farming method. They've increased their profitability. That's great. Um, I just need 
cash to operationalize testing the soil carbon so that we can actually go and get rewarded for those credits. From there, it'll be very easy for me to form a sales team that reaches out to existing beef farms and continue scaling the process. Okay. And have you ever pitched your idea to like for seed funding and stuff like that? Um, we've, we've got a lot of belief, um, thanks to the strength of Peter's science and the um, message. So we've got our first pilot um, set uh, within the next few months, just off people volunteering assets as powerful as land to us. All right. Okay. Good luck. I hope something comes through. Thank you so much. Thanks, sure. Alicia. Thank you, Tristan. Thank you so much. Um, you can sit back and relax. And thank you so much for joining us and sharing the idea. Um, and anyone out there wants to know more, get in contact with Tristan. All the details are in there as well. All right. We are over to our last picture. Can you believe it? These this go so quickly. My goodness. We have got Amano, Papa George. Unmute. Say hello. Let me know where you are. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. Hello. All right. You've got the task of rounding us out tonight, Amano. So over to you. You've got 90 seconds to pitch and it starts now. Off you go. Awesome. Thank you. So my startup is titled Printula and our goal is to provide a solution and also act as a precedent for how we can reduce plastic waste. Now, typically single-use plastics wastes, they're used once or perhaps twice, and they eventually just end up in our landfills or in our oceans. And this is commonly titled as a linear eco economy. What I'm proposing is a circular economy with Printula, and it ensures that these products stay away from landfills and remain within the economy. What we will do is print highly unique homeware, furniture, and architectural products. And once they reach the end of their life cycle, through whatever means, they come back to us and we will ground them down and reuse them for another product. Now, 3D printing is a technology that is still very much in its infancy. There are currently no businesses in Australia or any form of competition uh, across Australia that are pursuing this particular 3D, 3D printing niche. Um, and you know, 3D printing as offers an immense design freedom that enables the creation of products that would otherwise be highly impractical to manufacture through conventional mediums. And our service will be B2B and B2C. We will offer an MVP catalogued set of um, products that will help us in the short term build that initial capital. And in the long term, our goal will be to move to a SaaS platform that can enable customers to create spoke products to their specific liking. Thank you. Uh, well done, Amato. Thank you for rounding us out. Um, incredible. All right, judges, who's going to have that final word, final feedback? I'm going to go to Ross. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, Ross, <laughs> yeah. you. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, great pitch. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of potential in it as well. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering, just yeah, what kind of help do you need? So I possess, I guess, all of the expertise I need around the technical side of you know 3D printing and you know the product creation and management. It would be more so with the technical side uh, pertaining to the SaaS platform. Uh, that isn't my expertise. I don't know a hell of a lot about web development, UI, UX. So I think guidance in that domain would be helpful. Uh, also funding to uh, purchase the 3D printers. Um, yeah, those would be the, the two primary areas for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Amano. Thank you so much for sharing. And please, as I mentioned, all those details for Amano are in there, as are all our pictures. Um, and now we've got the audience. You have an incredible time to actually fill out this form because we want to get your vote on who is going to win at the community award. We have time. Our breakout rooms are ready. But David, did you want to say anything before we head out to the breakout rooms and the judges deliberate over who they're going to award their prizes to? Yes, if you ask me like that. Yes, I do have something to <laughs> announce. Um, what a great event. 12 pictures. We, that, that's, I think that's a new record uh, that we have here on the Wilco one. Thank you, Karen, for keeping us on, on track and on pace. Uh, amazing uh, job. Um, it's good to see people coming back. I think we saw Bala uh, before. 
Um, I'm very happy that we see two, uh, saw two pitches that uh, pitched in December at our live pitch night at Melbourne Connect here in Melbourne, coming here to the to the virtual event as well. And I just want to put a call out um, out for to, uh, today. The next live pitch night is already scheduled. It will be at the 16th of uh, March at Melbourne Connect. UN sustainable uh, sustainable development goals uh, are the topic, and we narrow it down to digital inclusion, digital health, privacy, online. Um, those are startups that we would love to reach out to us and apply to pitch at the 16th of March here in Melbourne. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, David. All right, breakout rooms, the magic's going to happen. Stay tuned with us because when we come back, we'll come back in about around 10 minutes or so um, and we will announce the winners. So still, please do stay on and take this opportunity to speak to all the pitchers when you get in those groups. All right, thanks. What an incredible night of pitches. How amazing. All of you are winners. You've got your idea out there. I know the 90 second pitch is such a hard thing to do. I have done it myself. So I can I can say that with hand on heart, it is a really hard thing to do. So you should all be very, very incredibly proud of yourself. All right, we are going to announce the winners for tonight. So how this actually will work is the prize winners. Um, I will send an email connection between you and one and the judge straight after this event. Um, so look out for that email, check your, your junk folder too, because it will be coming from my weekly yours um, email address. So if you haven't received it within the next sort of couple of hours, make sure you go and check that. Um, and the judges will be in contact with you direct so you can redeem your prize. All right, that is enough for me, Ross. Unmute. Okay. We're gonna we say your comments and then allow for the drum roll. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, loads of loads of great pictures tonight, guys. Um, like I think there's a few that I'm kind of really like. Like I think Tree Queen's a really great idea. Zero tag as well. Um, and Amano from that printer, like three D. Um, the 3D printing thing. I think that's last two. I could probably help you if UX if it's kind of needed. But I think the the company that I think kind of spoke most to me in the prize um, was probably. Um, Um, Chris from the NUFA app, I really think the ideation sessions that we're offering can really kind of help you kind of figure out where, where we're going. So yeah, we'd love to connect that to them. Awesome. Great work, everyone. It's amazing. Oh, well done. Thank you, Ross. That worked with the drum roll. I love it. All right, Nalusha, over to you. Who is the lucky winner of your prize? All right. So great presentations, everyone. Most of all, I think I would like to thank everyone for actually coming and presenting and, you know, you know, sharing your pitch with us. So there were a couple of great ideas that kind of synced with me. So this was uh, Sheriff, uh, Linda, and that's not the winner, so, <laughs> and, and, and Joseph. <laughs> but uh, the one that I feel that I can really help and contribute to is uh, Idea Clip. <laughs> yeah, so Linda's Idea Clip is what I would like to go with. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> Brian. Oh, congratulations, Linda. Nalisha will work on that drum roll. Do not worry. Well done. All right. And David, over to you to announce the winner. And then we'll be heading to Brian for the um, voting for the um, audience pick as well. So David, over to you. Thank you, Karen. Um, yeah, great pitches, full house, 12 pitchers, 50 people on the call. Uh, amazing start into the new year. Um, I have shortlisted three startups free founders that uh, i really think uh, i'm i'm passionate uh, to uh, to help and i can help um one special mention mina your idea resonates so much with me uh, helping people uh, young people to make their dreams come true um so um we will probably be in touch anyway but i decided drum roll i decided uh, that my go to Chris and pull out wrangler Congrats, Chris. Congrats. Thanks, mate. Congrats, Chris. Looking forward to working together with you. Um, thank you and congrats to all the other pitchers. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to seeing some of you soon again, hopefully. We hand over to Brian. Okay, so I want to thank everybody who actually voted <laughs> um, because I was afraid that nobody was going to do it. So I'm glad... I'm glad some people uh, thought it was worthwhile. Um, by a rather large margin, the winner is.
Grant from Dabbler IO. Congrats. And just because I can, I will uh, double that prize and will give uh, a second publication on Silicon Beach uh, social media and idea spies to Jeffrey from Better Health Academy because we love you and sustainable development goals. Oh, Congrats. Congratulations. Well done. Yay. Hi, Jeffrey. Thank you. Fantastic. It's All a right. privilege. <laughs> well, we have come to the end. So I'm going to hand to David to say thank you. But thank you so much for joining us tonight. I have had an absolute ball um, and it's hit over the seven o'clock. So you've got 60 seconds, David, to close us out. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Karen. Um, 12 pictures. You didn't know what, what to expect and you managed it uh, wonderfully. Uh, what would we do without you? Thank you so much. And many thanks to my co-judges, uh, Nilusha and uh, Ross from uh, Underdog Academy. If you like what they're doing and you need help with your product development, you didn't win the prize, reach out to them anyway. Uh, they're really a good a company, good people, uh, hard in the right spot. So please reach out to Ross and Underdog. And uh, what else did I want to say? I want to thank uh, the rest of the team here on the call. I want to thank Brian, uh, who is uh, running the show. And I want to thank Janine, who is managing all the technology in the background and setting up all the events and doing the mail outs together with Brian. So thank you all for your help as well. And yeah, have a beautiful rest of your evening. Celebrate, uh, have fun and um, have success and, fun and enjoy. Bye-bye. <laughs>